speak on the effect of the crackdown on the judiciary. In the first place, DSS by their name, State Security Service. And when we are talking about, um, uh, if we are talking about um, coup plotting, subversion, and things like that, like sabotage, about I mean, sabotage. That is what I think uh, they should be like. This book Waram. Those are the things that concern the security of the entire state, not individual. When you have the FCC, ICPC, police. So government coming to tell us that uh, they've reported to somebody or to a uh, national judicial council they are not helping the matter and they have to resort. I don't believe in that. I don't believe. In fact, it is wrong. And my perception is that once you start on the wrong footing, you can never get it right because you, get, you end up with the wrong results. For the DSS to invade the judiciary, which is an arm of government, is, is more like damaging the psyche of the judiciary and the judges. And remember that that judiciary is the only hope of the common man. What about when the judiciary is so invaded? What would be the, the, I mean, the, the, the hope and the, I mean, I mean the, 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 the hope of the ordinary man? In other words, the ordinary man has nowhere to run to to protect the, the rights, the fundamental rights of the ordinary citizen because the courts where the ordinary man will run to to enforce his right has been invaded and the judges arrested and whisked away. So where is the common man going to go to? We must think these things properly and true. We must not destroy the institution because of a few. You are never going to uh, be able to um, um, testify to the, um, uh, the holiness or the purity of uh, anybody at any time. We are humans. Now, let me ask a question. If government wants the purity and the sanctity of the judiciary, in my opinion, I think that government is the worst corruptor of the judiciary. Because check, the, check, check things. Some of the judges feel they don't have to antagonize the, 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 the powers that be. And sometimes when they see clear things, they just defer to them to protect them. What do you call that if you want to be puritanical? Is that not corruption? So who is doing that? It is the executive. If the executive is not afraid, there are so many things they do wrong all the time. All the time. Check it. So if they want a, a, a clean judiciary and, you know, I don't know who will be worst hit. I believe the, the, the executive themselves will be worst hit. Lawyers have also been speaking on the several challenges that the judiciary faces, one of which is funding. The president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Lagos branch, Martins Ogule, says the issue of funding does not only affect the core of the judiciary, but also affects the delivery of the judges. Lagos State for, for now has 54 judges, a population of about 17 million about 10,000 cases every year. So the ratio, the case ratio in the, in, in, in the cards of each judge is far above what under normal circumstances each judge should be. In the educational system, you, you remember that they say that um, the teacher-student ratio should be name and mouth. For us to have qualitative judgments and decisions. The case ratio per judge must be at its minimum. But unfortunately, the personnel is not there and it is related also to funding. I remember in the, um, two years ago, Lagos State to the question for about 10 new judges, but the NJC said, look, we can only give you six. So that is how it is. Third, following that, is that um, over the years we have gone from a federal judiciary into a unitary judiciary. And the point is that the states, all the judges of the states, are now funded from the federal. They're under the direction and supervision of the NJC. They're under the direction and supervision of the Federal Judicial Service Commission. So that is why a state like Lagos State, even if it needs 100 judges, cannot today say, okay, we will appoint 100 judges. So we need to retreat our steps 
Yes, there was the issue of probably uniformity, probably uniformity in standards. At a point in time, some judges somewhere we are getting paid this high, where some judges elsewhere were getting paid this low. But we are a federal republic. We operate a federal constitution. And I'll tell you where some of these problems, where, where they manifest. The governor of a state is one constitutionally empowered to appoint and fire a judge. But I cannot do so without the recommendation and the approval of the National Judicial Council. So this always creates some... You remember the debacle we had in River State recently, where the governor purported, wanted to appoint a new chief judge, and there was a lot of crisis, and they had to go back and forth to the NJC, and that state was in a crisis in the judiciary for several months. So we need for everything, we need to go back to our federal structure so that the judiciary in the state are truly independent. Before we let you go, let's take a look at some court stories. Another set of two federal high court judges, Justice Abadu James Fisham and Justice Owani Abaji, has responded to the invitation of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission as they presented themselves before operatives at the Lagos Zonal Office, Awolawa Road, Ikoyi. Three other judges, Justice Mohammed Nasir Yudusa and Heila Zera Adiya Nganjiwa and Musa Haruna Kuria, had earlier reported to the Commission on Monday, 17th of October 2016 and the 18th of October 2016. Some of the judges who were accompanied by their lawyers have so far been cooperating with the operatives. Two prisoners at the Kujé Medium Prison have been released unconditionally, while another eight are to be allowed to go home should their fines be settled by well-meaning Nigerians. The Chief Judge of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, Justice Usman Bello, who announced this, also said a panel has been set up to fast-track cases awaiting trial between now and the first quarter of 2017. Justice Bello says the exercise is part of efforts by the judiciary to decongest the nation's prisons which are being stretched beyond capacity. The court-martial trying soldiers elect to have committed offences during Operation Lafi and Dole in Borono State has derived and sentenced one officer to three years in prison over assault on a minor. The convict, identified as Staff Sergeant Umar Sule, was first arraigned in August alongside 19 others for various offences. Ten-year-old Mohammed Usman sat limbless in court while proceedings were being conducted. The president of the court-martial, Brigadier General Ulusha Gwadini, says the military is determined to uphold discipline within its ranks. The trial involving a former director general of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Mr. Patrick Akwobulokemi, retired Major General Emmanuel Atewe and two others, has begun at the Federal High Court in Lagos. Answering questions from the Council to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Rotimi Oyedekbo, the prosecution's witness, Taslim Ajuan, said over 8 billion naira was transferred from the MASA to the Joint Task Force Operation Polo Shield and within a number of days, the money was distributed to six companies. Mr. Taslim also testified that the part of a sum which was transferred to Jagan Limited was signed by the two signatories of the GTF, which includes Major General Emmanuel Atewe. Justice Saidu Salu adjourned the trial to November the 22nd, while cross-examination will begin on December the 5th. And that will do it for us on the program today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm Victoria Idowu. Till I see you again, believe in yourself. Bye for now.